Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the Feast of the Holy Family. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Russell Pollitt. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, with the Spirit. and welcome as we come together to celebrate today the feast of the Holy Family of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, right after Christmas Day. We come before the Lord, and we know that inasmuch as we find love and affirmation and acceptance in our families, Whatever the form of that family is, at times too, we are wounded in family life. We are wounded and we also wound others. Let's bring our families and our lives before the Lord, asking for mercy and forgiveness. Lord Jesus, your Son of God and Son of Mary, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, your Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come again in glory to judge both the living and the dead. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on Amen. earth, peace, peace to people of goodwill. Good will. We, we praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. O God, who are pleased to give us the example of the Holy Family, graciously grant that we may imitate them in practicing the virtues of family life and in the bonds of charity. And so, in the joy of your house, delight one day in eternal rewards. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Sirach. The Lord honored the Father above the children, and he confirmed the rights of the mother over her sons. Whoever honors his father atones for sins and preserves himself from them. When he prays, he is heard, and whoever glorifies his mother is like one who lays up treasure. Whoever honors his father will be gladdened by his own children, and when he prays, he will be heard. Whoever glorifies his father we have long life, and whoever obeys the Lord will refresh his mother. O son, help your father in his old age. Do not grieve him as long as he lives. Even if he is lacking in understanding, show forbearance, and do not despise him all the days of his life, for kindness to a father will not be forgotten, and against your sins it will be created to you a house raised in justice to you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed are all who fear the Lord and walk in his ways. Blessed, Blessed are all who fear the Lord and, and walk, walk in his ways. Blessed are all who fear the Lord and walk in his ways. By the labor of your hands you shall eat. 
you will be blessed and prosper. Blessed are those who fear the Lord and walk in his ways. Your wife, like a fruitful vine in the heart of your house, your children, like shoots of the olive around your table. Blessed are all who fear the Lord and walk in his ways. Indeed, thus shall be blessed the man who fears the Lord. May the Lord bless you from Zion. May you see Jerusalem prosper all the days of your life. Blessed are all who fear the Lord and walk in his ways. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, put on as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassion, kindness, lowliness, meekness, and patience, forbearing one another. And if one has a complaint against another, forgive each other as the Lord has forgiven you. So, you also must forgive. And over all this, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in the one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, as you teach and admonish one another in all wisdom, and as you sing psalms and hymns of spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Wives, be subject to your husband, as is fitting in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and do not be harsh with them. Children, obey your parents in everything, for this pleases the Lord. Fathers, do not provoke your children, lest they become discouraged. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The parents of Jesus went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when he was twelve years old, they went up according to the custom. And when the feast was ended, as they were returning, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. His parents did not know it. But supposing him to be in the company, they went on a day's journey, and they sought him among their kinsfolk and acquaintances. And when they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem, seeking him. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. When they saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us so? Behold, your father and I have been looking for you anxiously. And he said to them, How is it that you sought me? Do you not know that I must be in my father's house? And they did not understand the saying which he spoke to them. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was obedient to them. And his mother kept all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and people. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. How and where do we experience God? 
this is an important question that human beings continue and always will grapple with. How does God relate to our human experience? The scripture scholar N.T. Wright says that we have three options as we grapple with how God is involved in our human experience or relates to our human experience. He said the first one is that we can say that God is completely separate, that God lives somewhere up in the sky, and God is up there and we are down below. Captured uh, perhaps by that song sung a number of years ago by Beth Midler, God is watching us from a distance. We have a distant God who remains far away. Wright says the second option is that we believe that God is everywhere. There's no distinction between God and between creation. God is all in all. Theologically, we call this pantheism, where God is in all, that there's no distinction between creature and creator. But he says there is a third option, and that option is there is a distinction between God and us, between God and creation, yet God is woven into the very fabric of of our lives, into the very fabric of our everyday experience. And somehow God overlaps and interlocks with human experience. Put another way, we live in a world that is God-bathed, that is alive with the presence of God. It seems to me that third option, that God is present in every experience, every event in our lives is the one that is most accurate and helps us to articulate an answer to how we experience God. God is always actively present, actively creating in many different ways. And because God is present, God meets us in the reality of our lives. A retreat giver said to me recently, reality is God's home address. God can only be in the real, in the reality of our lives. And this is why I think that today's feast of the Holy Family is such an important one in our liturgical calendar. It's such a a real one. It's one which I think helps us to grapple with God in the midst of our lives in a very concrete way. We call this feast the Holy Family, which is a bit strange if you think about it. The account that we hear about in the scriptures today doesn't seem to depict a holy family, but a family that is in conflict, that struggles because one of its members is missing. We hear the word anxiety in today's gospel reading when we consider this family. There is a conflict, and this will not be the first conflict. One can only imagine the anxiety of Mary and Joseph as they search for their child. But think of all the other anxieties before this for them. A woman who is pregnant and not married in a culture that expects her to be married. A woman who gives birth in a place which is not kosher to give birth. A man who is considering in his head divorcing this woman because of the fact that she is with child. Isn't worry and anxiety so much part of the reality of our own family life and experience today? We worry and we are anxious about many things. We are anxious economically. We are anxious about the education of children. We are anxious about the political situation. We are anxious about the conflicting relationships sometimes in our families. And so it seems to me that the word holy does not imply, as we so often hear when we hear the word holy family, the perfect family. 
because I don't think that Jesus, Mary, and Joseph were simply just the perfect family. Holy is something different. There will be conflicts. There will be anxieties. There will be worries because that is the reality of our human life. But when we see God in the midst of that reality, in the midst of our anxieties and our struggle, in the midst of the conflict in our relationships, in families, that's when we begin to understand what holy really is. Maybe captured by Paul in that second reading in his letter to the Colossians, that when we are patient and obedient and choose to be loving when there is conflict and anxiety, when there's worries, that is when we discover what holiness is, when we strive to live those values in the midst of our reality, that is a holy family. Notice a second thing in that gospel reading, that Jesus begins to find his identity as he sits in the temple. He learns the truth about who he is And Mary and Joseph begin to understand perhaps something, we are told, of who Jesus is. They learn the truth about themselves. That somehow in the family, we begin to develop our own identity and learn who we really are. We are molded. We begin to find out what is important those three days that we hear that they are searching for Jesus as he sits in the temple, forecast or predict for us the three days that are to come, the three days of his uh, passion, death, and resurrection. And so there's a glimpse of the true identity of Jesus, even though he seems to be quite cheeky and not really obedient to his parents who have gone off and left him thinking he was with them. In our own family life, perhaps in the midst of the difficulties and the contradictions, maybe even the tragedies, we are taught something about who we really are. We are given our identity. And it has to happen in the midst of that reality of our family, whatever our family looks like. And so it's important, too, that we see that the holy family is a family, too, that begins to grapple with its own identity as a unit, but also individually. And we should have the freedom to do the same in our own families. And then there's one other thing I think worth reflecting on. Jesus says that he's in the temple doing the will of the Father. One wonders why his mothers didn't give him a good smack because it seemed like a very cheeky answer. It's in the midst of this moment in their family life that we hear that Jesus is doing the will of the Father. But notice the context once again, one where they are searching frantically for him, one where they perhaps are feeling at their wit's end as they look for this missing child. You see, God is always working in our family life. Somehow the will of God is always happening, even when we think the circumstances for the will of the Father to happen are not perfect. Lives are always intermingled with the divine presence, even when there is anxiety or conflict. Sometimes perhaps we think that the will of God is only happening when things are perfectly calm and peaceful, in some utopian kind of idea of what we should be living. And yet, Mary and Joseph discover, as does Jesus, that in the midst of the reality of their lives, in the search for this child, in their anxiety and their worry, God's will is being worked out. God is present 
and God is active. And so too, when we look for the presence of God in the reality of where we find ourselves, when we tune in to God's presence, because very often God is present, but because of what's happening around us, we have this idea that God cannot be present, and we are not tuned into God's presence or fine-tuned into God's presence, we will notice that God is at work. God is always there. God is working, redeeming us in the midst of the reality of our family life. God is working to recreate in the midst of the reality of our family life. God is healing in the midst of the reality of our family life. Don't look for the perfect family. Look for a holy family, one that discovers God in the midst of your raw reality, whether that's the joy or the muck and the mess of your family life. Because there you will find the divine presence amongst you and within you. So friends, let's pray together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father, the Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. And so on this feast of the Holy Family, let's now bring our needs, especially the needs of our families, before the Lord. For families in all shapes and guises, that being together would be a time for mutual giving and grace, and that through each other people would find love, acceptance, affirmation, and encouragement. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For struggling families, that they hold be open to God's Spirit, which makes all things new and all things possible. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For children, that they will know that they are accepted and cared for. Let us pray that we will do all we can to ensure that children grow and flourish in stability and love. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord, graciously hear us. For those who are sick or wounded in any way, we pray particularly for those who are sick and for those who are victims of violence in families. May they find healing and peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For our own needs. Let us pray for a moment in silence, bringing our needs, and particularly for the needs of our families before the Lord. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord our God, you give us the gift of family life in different guises so that we can learn to live together. We thank you on this Feast of the Holy Family for this gift. And we pray now that you hear and answer our prayers as you know best through Christ Jesus, your Son, and our risen Lord. 
Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer. Fruit of the earth, work of our human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine, work of our human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Let's pray, sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice and the sacrifice and efforts of our lives may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Creator. And we will accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, by the the Lord, our Holy Church. We offer you, Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation, humbly asking that, through the intercession of the Virgin Mother of God and St. Joseph, you may establish our families firmly in your grace and your peace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind, so that as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the cup, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the cup to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world. For by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the offering of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, 
so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis our Pope, Buti our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family you have called before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, especially those from our families, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let's now pray together in the words that the Lord Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but rather on our faith, and graciously grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And Let's spend a moment now praying for peace in our own hearts, and especially in our families, in the family of the church in our country and in the world. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. How blessed are we who are called to share in the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. But in blood of Christ, bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defines spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion, which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, 
you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here. Let us pray. Bring those you refresh with this heavenly sacrament, most merciful Father, to imitate constantly the example of the Holy Family, so that after the trials of this world we may share their company forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's go now in peace to love and serve God by loving and serving one another. Thanks be to God.